guys, this is Maron from Speak of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So before we get into the video while I'm sketching over there, you may notice a couple of things. Number one, my video might look a little bit jumpy, a little bit fast. Um, that's because I actually accidentally recorded it in the wrong speed. So apparently, I use a 0.5 second setting. I accidentally set it to a 1 second setting. So it's super duper fast. So I tried to slow it down a little bit, hopefully to catch a little bit more of the motion and so that my hands aren't speeding and flying everywhere. Number two, the audio might be a little different. So I bought a little mic that wasn't, wasn't much and and it doesn't it looks kind of generic and I don't have much hopes for its survivability but it's actually it, it's nice to touch actually <laughs> but it seems to do a lot of a better job than my mic for my phone okay so background so what I use for my videos is my Samsung Galaxy S6 phone I use that to record the video and then I do voiceover on it after and then I transfer the clips over to Premiere on my laptop and I'd edit it there and then that's how I do my videos so I'm still using my S6 for the video but I felt like the audio was a little bit I don't know I didn't like the audio on it it was okay it did its job but I feel like if I could get a mic for it it might be better so I bought this mic and it seems to be doing much better than my phone it has some auto noise cancellation which is Thank God, I, I've needed this for such a long time <laughs> and it does seem to pick up a little bit more than my mic. So actually let me know in the comments below if you've been watching my videos and especially to compare it to the one before this, if you hear any difference, if it's any better or if it's worse or anything like that. Uh, what's up? What else? What else? Yeah, that's all. Um, aside from me getting a new laptop, so my editing speeds a lot faster now, and I can run Audacity and Premiere at the same time. Woo! <laughs> That's pretty much. If you want to know more a bit about that, please watch the video before this one. It's the Moon Gods video. Hopefully, I'll drop it in the iCard. If not, it's on my YouTube channel. I blabber on there about how I change laptops and why I change laptops and all of that. Yeah. Son of the Beast. So, you're doing one of my original characters today. He... Well, he's, his name's Alto. And he's... Um... How do you put this? This flirty... Bad boy... Like, I won't introduce you to my mother type of guy. So... But he's not bad, bad. He's like a flirty playboy type of bad. He's not a fuckboy type of bad. He's just a playboy type of bad. And... He falls in love for the sweetest, cutest little thing for, for a lover, <laughs> the purest soul you'll ever meet. <laughs> so of course we went we went with that trope. So yeah, <laughs> I said so too many times. Uh, what I wanted to do with this piece was to show him in the more domestic light or you know beyond the playboy bad boy persona by having him make breakfast for his waifu <laughs> and it's it is, it is adorable and when I sketched this out in my sketchbook a year ago I really really love the sketch and I, I really love the composition and I felt like if I colored this like oh this would turn out so great and I re replicated it on the sketchbook so I knew that I could do the piece but when I was trying to do it on the bigger canvas this size to be exact I, I couldn't do it. Like the pose was wrong, the perspective, the background was wrong, everything was wrong. And so I kind of scrapped it and I just put the sticky note on it to bookmark it and shoved it away. So today I was looking for stuff to draw. I was thinking, like, oh, maybe I could do a fate fan art, but I just did Arthur recently. So I don't want to do it too often. I, I don't want to be known for just fate. Or I could do a thematic, which. I just did with the moon goddess, so I was trying to look for something, you know, chill, something I'd, I'd enjoy doing, and I looked up and saw my old sketchbooks, and I saw that little sticky note hanging out of that sketchbook, 
and I saw this sketch and I thought, hey, maybe one year gave me enough skills and practice to let me try this piece again. And yeah, it kind of turned out actually. It turned out it's not super, I mean, it's not 100% to the T what I imagined in my head, especially with the sketch still being there. But it's actually really, really close and I actually really like how it turned out. And yeah, so I used a brush pen. So this the Sakura fine light, what do you call it? The Sakura brush pen thing. And brush pens were a thing for a year or two, or at least one or two years ago on YouTube. I, I, I think a lot of people still use them and a lot of people love them, which is good. But I feel like... I don't know. I don't know how to feel about them. Because when I bought this brush pen and when I got into them, my style was still very line art heavy and reliant. And it was okay. I I had okayish control with it. I kind of liked the variation in the lines that I could do with it. But since my hand is pretty steady, I can maintain a somewhat um, even weight on, on the lines. So that is okay. But... I think I shifted my style somewhere around last year to be a little bit less dependent or reliant on lines. I wanted my colors and the shadows and the shapes and, you know, I wanted it to define the piece itself and not through the line art. Or if I did line art, I wanted the line art to be pretty detailed or it had good line weight so that it still meshed well. So I don't know why I actually used the brush pen today because what I had in mind was more of a colors and shadows and shapes dependent piece and not a line of dependent piece. So that's one thing I'm a little bit iffy if I like what I did or not. Like sure, it, it he's, he really popped out against the background because he's the only one with line art. But I I don't I don't know like. I don't know if it was a good decision or not. Like, I think I should have used my fine liners instead so that they had thinner and better control. But it also gave this certain charm to it. Like, it has this more, you know, charmy, homey, cottagey feel to it. So I can't decide if I like it or not. Maybe I need to sleep on it. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, so the reason he's the only one with line art was because. I've learned through experience and my older pieces that if I line and detail my backgrounds as much as I do the character, my character just gets jumped out <laughs> completely. And I wanted to avoid that again with this piece, so I tried doing it lines at first. And I will add a little bit of line art to it in the end, but that's using the paint from what the watercolor itself. So it blends in a little bit more than the stark and harsh black lines of the line of the pen, rather. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much it. What else? Oh, so I will disclaim that I do use three palettes in this video, and that's normally not a bad thing, but <laughs> please don't feel like you need to own three palettes to get a piece like this done. I just didn't want to think today and these palettes I've accumulated over years and working, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> so I used, yeah, I actually bought them off my own money or they were Christmas gifts and stuff like that. So the first palette you see is the Sakura Koi watercolor palette and this is the one that I use the most. It has the most colors and I do mix the colors a little bit and this is something I advocate for somewhat I mean as an artist so because I'm used to I'm used to tube paints I'm used to mixing colors and that's one of the things that I have difficulty with with pan watercolors is that I feel it, it's great that the colors are already there I don't need to think as much or if I need to mix they're not as inconsistent as with tube paints but I don't know why but I feel like they're harder to mix colors with or if I wanted a really, I don't know, I feel like it's a little bit harder to control the pan paint sometimes against the shoe paints honestly. 
it could be because I started with truth paints. But yeah, but my, one of my advocacies in, as an artist, or it's one of my things as an artist that I always advocate for people trying to mix colors and not just rely on what's on the pan. And I used to do this by just layering the colors, especially with the pan paints. I just like layer the colors over on top of each other until they kind of blend and mix. But of course, mixing is still completely different in terms of effect. So, I do mix a little bit. <laughs> Why did we go on that tangent? I don't know. Um, I mix a little bit, but I do rely on my pants this time to get me through this piece. Mm, I didn't really want to think that much. I wanted to just paint. It's been a... No, I, I did the Copic thing last week, but I felt like it's been a while since I drew anything with watercolors, so I just wanted to grab the colors and go. So I'm using the Sakura Koi as I mentioned, and then I'll be bringing out the Sak the no 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 the Prima Confections watercolor uh, watercolor set with the complexions variant. Oh there, there it is, right on time. And funnily enough, I don't use it for the skin tone. I use it for the tan in the palette for the ball paint. You know, because like the one, the one on the Sakura was too acidic, and then the one that you see right now is a Zig pearlescent watercolor jewel box that I got last Christmas. And at first, I actually underestimated this palette. So you know about like the ones from Koretake and them being like the beloved of the art community on YouTube, but I've never seen this one, so I didn't know anything about it. I felt like it might not perform, especially like with its packaging, it felt a little bit cheap. But man oh man, as a graphic designer, I should know best that you mustn't judge anything by its packaging or its design because it it worked well. It it did its job pretty well. I mean, probably compared to Kurata, it, it still might be lower. I don't know, I haven't tried, but it, it, it did well. It did well. And I underestimated it. And I might do a review of it because I haven't seen it anywhere, to be honest. I'm, I'll do a search on it. We'll see. Anyway, back to the video. So right now, I am doing the line art. I am adding a little bit of finishing touches. And yeah, so I really like this piece. It, it has this really nice sunshine, yellowy vibe. It gives off this homey feel. You have this husband though. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm a weeb. <laughs> you have this guy, handsome guy, <laughs> cooking for you, and that's the dream, I guess. <laughs> so we're jumping to the preview, you know, just to see it in a different light. If you like this video, please consider liking or subscribing to me and my channel. <laughs> to my channel, not to me, I guess. Um, I do fan art and anime and watercolor and stuff like that. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and DeviantArt, and I'll see you around.